Welcome to Auto Lifestyle. This is Jackie. Uh, if you are here for the first time, please make sure you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and also don't forget to click on the notification bell to get notified every time I get to upload new videos just like today. So today we have a special guest on my channel and I'm really happy because I believe whatever he's gonna share is something that is coming from the Lord and it's going to bless us in the Lord. <laughs> so welcome to the Auto Lifestyle. Introduce yourself and just tell us more about yourself. No, the right hand. The right is this one. <laughs> anyway, the go. No, that was oh okay, snap. Go ahead. All right. Um, my name is Andrew. Uh, also known as the most handsome guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm Jackie's friend, brother, mentor, mentor. Oh. What else should I put there? <laughs> <laughs> I must have a CV. But anyway, okay. my name is Andrew Chomba uh, Chishala. I am. Uh, in a Catholic parish okay that's really my 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 home church okay. um, at least for now I don't know where God will take me but for now that's why I am okay. um, I'm one of the That's basically what I do in the kingdom of God, other than being part of the movement. Okay. Yeah, that's that's basically what I do. Okay, so you are here because I invited you to share something really amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So uh, I got a conviction to feature him on my channel. I was thinking, say maybe God can, you know, use him through uh, his testimony and whatnot because. For some time now god has been convicting me to bring other people on the channel yeah. and you are one of the people that he convicted me to uh feature so i just want you to within a few minutes mm -hmm. unless if your story is really long oh, shit, <laughs> just Hallelujah. share with us mm -hmm. how you got saved you know apart from me just being able to share the word of god i want people to see it to say surely the word of god is very active and yeah. is capable of changing things you know? and i know that you being here and you being one of a few people I feel from is because of the word of God. Yeah. So how did you encounter God? You know, because people who know you know you to be this man of God who is living in the fullness of Christ. Am I? In as much as you are not there, there yeah. like would put it, yeah. but your life is a living testimony. You are one of the people that I feel from. You are one of the people that really encourages me a lot. You have been working with me since day one of my faith. Oh, preach, preach it. Since 2015. <laughs> So yeah, I would just love you to share your life story on this channel, how you got to encounter Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, and how your life has been after encountering Jesus, yeah. you know, and how you have reached a stage where you're, where you're just so uh, selfless with um, how you live your life. So how do you meet Jesus? And you know, how have you grown to be this man that everyone loves to be around, you know? So yeah, I think that's my question. And First of all, I must say, okay. I'm really grateful okay. that I'm on your platform. Okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. So that's now an overestimation. But I'm still grateful. Um, okay. I, I love your content. I follow it. Okay. Um, so please like and subscribe and do all those other things that you've been encouraged to do. Anyway, okay. um, to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I feel like maybe some of the things you've said i don't see myself there okay and please i'm not saying i'm not saying that um, i'm not trying to be humble oh okay uh -huh. i know i'm handsome mm -hmm. but i'm not trying to be like really really humble but anyway i'm grateful okay um how did i get saved mm. a friend of mine said chomba aren't you one of those people that just found yourself saved mm. you see <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't make sense um it really doesn't make sense Saved in my bathroom. Well, bathroom. I wow. know this is 
like graphic maybe but that's the truth you got saved from your bathroom yes that's when i actually okay. received the holy spirit when i was bathroom mm. and i was alone alone no one had to lay no their one. hand on you no to one. receive the holy spirit no and that's a weird thing because i i got saved in that space okay. and now i just had to learn to depend on the holy spirit from that place wow you know so mm. yeah that's basically yeah basically it but you know you got saved in the bathroom how did you reach that point because i see a lot of us thinking that you can only receive the holy spirit when you are attending an overnight or you are in a prayer meeting with these firemen of god you know it's like people think the holy spirit can't you know be on them or they can't be baptized with the holy spirit when they are alone so how did you reach that point where you are able to acknowledge that okay or you are able to notice the presence of god and you need to say this encounter just from having is the holy spirit um type of encounter then apart from that like before you that point where you are receiving the holy spirit you are desiring uh, the holy spirit because i believe the holy spirit doesn't come minus one being able to desire him yeah. so how did you reach that position or that point hmm. um i was a messed up kid okay how you know? can you just elaborate um insecurities i grew up intimidated hmm. okay. and so i was trying to cover up my intimidation okay. by looking for the validation and so one of the things that I, I sought after so much was acceptance from my friends. Okay. Accept so there was so much baggage that I was carrying. Okay. And on top of that, there was, of course, porn issues, masturbation issues, okay. and whatnot. And so I think in trying to look for like some sort of, you know, escape, some sort of hope, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. um, I got, I started looking for for people that could help me you know in my faith like hey i hear jesus saves okay. i know jesus can i hear jesus can can, can change people okay. and i'm looking for that and so i went to different churches i, I attended different deliverance sessions okay. with some of the people that are actually close to me right now people that i consider um, my mentors in a way and so i went to these places looking for for hope and help um so that journey, as I was on that journey, I gave up. I said, none of this seems to be working. I'm hoping, you know, when you're in these delivery sessions, mm -hmm. you're thinking, maybe if I fall, mm -hmm. I'll fall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know? <laughs> so, You didn't oh, yes. use, no, you, no, 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 that, you must have used the wrong spirit. <laughs> anyway, get but, back but to your story. Really, that's, that's how I, I, I came to, to that place where I got saved. Oh. That's, that's the day I at least remember to say I got saved. You received the Holy Spirit, yeah. the baptism of the yeah. Holy Spirit, who is the seal of our salvation. Yes. Isn't it? So, you know, you haven't touched the aspect where you heard the gospel. 
because you can't receive the Holy Spirit, man, and speak able to hear the gospel. You know, because it takes a word for you to understand to say, I am a sinner. Christ came to save me, and now he had to die for me in order for me to be saved. You haven't touched that aspect. So who preached the gospel to you? How did you get to know about the gospel? Because you're saying that, uh, you know, you knew that there was hope in the gospel in the name of Christ, yeah, but you haven't good. touched the aspect where yeah. the actual word was preached to you. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for, for taking me back to that. Um, when did I hear the gospel? I read it by time. I, 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 at some point, I just began to pursue to say maybe maybe there's something I'm missing. Okay. And so I began to read the scriptures. And at that point, I, I felt nothing. I felt nothing. But then I knew that there was a salvation that was being preached that was true. You know. And then when I of course had that encounter, then I there's an awakening that I came to. I don't know how to explain this. I I, I don't want to use. I became alive. Okay. To to God in a sense, okay. such that now I began to pursue Him mm-hmm. with with consistency. With consistency. You know, and a new desire. And a new desire. It, it was something. It's something I can't explain because it's like you're just awake. You become sensitive. I don't. I don't know how to put this. Mm-hmm. But you become sensitive, mm-hmm. and you begin to you begin to crave something, mm-hmm. and you don't know where the craving is coming. Maybe I was not just as engaged mm-hmm. as I should have been at that point. So in other words, there was some type of guidance, you know, or I would say that was the basis of you trying to find out more. That, yes, that's it. Wisdom. <laughs> yes. So that beca- became the basis and you know, you had that I would say, or I must say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But upon you being able to, you know, hear what he was preaching and whatnot, and you were looking for something more. Then you began to uh, dig deeper, and as you were digging, then you were able to come. So maybe get, give an example of the things that you used to read as you were looking for the actual gospel and, and salvation in the Bible. And an example? I was yeah. reading everything. I'm From sorry. Genesis. Gen- I'm telling you to to have liberation. <laughs> uh, Genesis to liberation. Oh, really? Maybe let me read John. No, I just started. Okay, so. 
you know if you are let me give this scenario because i believe people who are watching this um you know are from different uh, families we have different exposure yeah. so let's say maybe there's someone who belongs to another religion is watching this so how how special is this jesus and the gospel such that this whole thing is you know very superior compared to the rest of the stuff that we've been exposed to let's look at other religions like you know hinduism let's look at you know islamic and all those things so for someone who is a muslim you know how would you encourage them to you know switch from their you know religion to this christianity don't we say christianity is not a religion i understand story for another day but how can you encourage them to switch to match your life you know because most of these people from other religions you like us christians we tend to act more superior and whatnot but you a person who was never saved while you were a baby or something was there are people who got baptized with the holy spirit when, when they, were, they were young so for you who got saved you know at a later stage in life how can you encourage someone who's from another religion to come to christ how special is this christ how special is this gospel is it capable of setting people free and do you have you know certain stuff that the gospel sets you free from Jesus, we find our hope. You know, mm -hmm. we find our hope. And one of the ways in which um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm, 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 I'm saying, "Hey, come to our side. Our side is lit." Okay. Um, I'm not saying that, but I think it's it's also uh, this should give someone an opportunity to really want to explore, wow. right? To explore. Um, to explore just just what this faith is, is about okay. um, I one of the things that I believe and maybe I'm not going to speak to the most okay. I'm going to speak to believers okay. right Jesus said they shall know you by what they shall know you my disciples by the way you love one another. exactly mm -hmm. and so it's our love really that distinguishes us from every wow. every everyone mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so the, I'm not going to target the, the Muslim, I'm going to target the believer. Wow. Can you show Christ in the way you live? Beca let Christ be so undeniably attractive, wow. right? Mm -hmm. That the Muslim or the Hindu or whoever it is would want to come and accept him and begin to live that way. I think it's worth it to, to try this. The believer should be the one to understand that my life is a light. Okay. So I don't I don't have anything to say to the Muslim to be honest. Except that Jesus is so undeniably attractive. Okay, but what I've gotten from you is the aspects of love. Yeah. You know. And you know again I've had stories to say, you know, we us in the Christian communities, only few people are able to see the actual love and what living in freedom and in joy regardless of life throwing punches at you so how's been your life that's good okay, okay for you. um <clears throat> so so um how has my journey been i i really believe this with all my heart um jesus doesn't only come to make your life better okay he comes to make you better at life say that again Jesus okay. doesn't only come to make your life better, mm. he comes to make you better at life. Wow. And so, um, to be honest, I think I'm doing life way better than I was. Because I'm finding, I'm not, so, I'm not finding it difficult. accept the mission that the Holy Spirit gives me. Okay. So 
so now I think that with the hard heart, right? Ezekiel says, you give us resistance whatsoever okay. it may be there but at least you can tell to say ah, if you can actually feel me then it means that there is actually hope okay. but with a, a heart of stone you can't feel anything you can't feel anything and so i think for me the fact that i'm responding to his call mm -hmm. at least i try my best to respond to his call every day it, it shows me to say there's been a, a, a significant a change. And even with regards to some of my addictions and whatnot, I'm seeing it helping me. has become so alive in your life in as much as you haven't talked about you know these huge stuff you know how it is with people unless you know god saved me from you know this yeah, and that but what of people who have never had struggles in their life can you still preach the gospel to them and i love the aspect that you didn't really dwell on stuff that he set you free from though he did set, yes. uh, set you free but i love the aspect that there was that awakening to the gospel awakening to the love of god and yeah. awakening to the fact that you are a sinner yeah. and you daily need god you know and you have been forced to live you know um in unity with god you know you have to live um in line with the will of god almost every day you have to live in worship and you know yesterday i was reading we reading uh romans 12 verse 1 and i don't know what uh, version i use because i have a lot of versions in my bible and you know i love how it came out to say whatever you do because it says offer yourself as a living it sacrifice is, is acceptable true. and devoted to the will of god and this is the scripture for water lifestyle by the way so you know i was um reading through i uh, used a certain version and i love how it came out I'm sure, I'm sure it should be msv and it was, it was saying live for god in uh, the way you work the way you love people you know almost every activity you have to live for god you know and i'm looking at what you are saying i think for me that's what i have um interpreted it to yeah. be how that you have understood to say we are called to live for god in yeah. every aspect yeah. of our life our lives christ came to die for us yeah. isn't it and he came to set us free from ourselves he has you know enabled us now to have that relationship and connection that got separated when we sinned, when adam sinned. Mm -hmm. so you know over from what i've heard i'm just seeing this young man who was looking for something more mm -hmm. isn't it yes you are looking for something more and you know you went to different churches you had different preachers and whatnot but at the end of the day you got tired and you sat down to read things on your own and the lord was able to meet you at that point yeah. and from there your life has never been the same yeah isn't it yeah. unless you have other things to say but this is something that i've gotten from you the art of being able to you know build a relationship with god on your own yes i know you have mentors but i really love the fact that you got baptized with the holy spirit when you were alone yeah. so anyway do you have more to say 
before you know we just you know wrap up this chat and whatnot well i uh like i said i'm handsome all right <laughs> i don't know why you so, no i just have to make mention so we bless the lord that you are so let aware hallelujah man hallelujah. of god hallelujah <laughs> but um god is not god is not afraid of the dark the dark stuff wow. he's not afraid of our past okay he's not afraid of our present okay god loves us so much okay. every one of us and there's nothing that can make him shun away from a person that calls out him. You know? And I guess at the end of the day, I just want people to know your audience and probably those that get a hold of this video. That God is calling you to He is. And he's relentless in the way he pursues us. You know? So let it be known that everyone has an opportunity to know him. Everyone has an opportunity, whether you are, you are planted in a church, whether you have run away from the church, whether the church has hurt you, you will still have, every one of us has an opportunity. And he gives every one of us that opportunity. Do you realize, okay. one of my favorite scriptures mm. is the, the story of the prodigal son. Mm. Okay. Why? Number one, because it presents us with two problems. Okay. Number one, it begins with a problem. That's, that's <laughs> not for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It begins with a problem and it ends with a problem. The hope is in the middle wow. of the story. Mm -hmm. It's not in the, at the end. Mm -hmm. It's not in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's in the middle of the story. So you can imagine how does God sandwich? Mm -hmm. That's bad writing. <laughs> for me. That's bad writing. How does God sandwich a story? Mm -hmm. You know, a problem on one end, mm -hmm. a problem on another end, mm -hmm. and hope in the middle. A good writer will end with hope. Oh. Maybe just elaborate. I'm sure that people who are wondering say, how? This is where the hope lies. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. The problem, if we notice, the be in the beginning is that the son mm -hmm. wanted his inheritance. Yeah. And he decided that he got the money or whatever it is, his wealth, and he went and he squandered it. Okay. That's the problem that it begins with. The problem that it ends with is this. The older son mm -hmm. is estranged from the father. Mm -hmm. Because he was unhappy that the son, the, the younger son, had come from the father, and the father accepted him. Right? Yeah. The hope is this is where the hope is. The time that the son, the younger son, was coming back home, the father ran to him. He saw him from afar, and the father ran to him. And that's why I'm saying, like, God is not so. God is not afraid of our mess. God is not afraid of what we've done. He's not afraid of our past. Mm -hmm. and what, but he's continually pursuing every one of us. Every one of us. So whether you, your, your life started with a problem, whether your life looks like it's a problem towards its end, God still is pursuing. And he gives us hope even in the midst of our mess. Just one last question. Don't don't take long to explain. Oh, it. <laughs> I can take long. I am preaching. Really? Yeah. Um. In as much as you were able to come the Holy Spirit on your own, there was no guidance. But after getting saved, you become accountable to the people because no man is an yeah. island. And like what we've been told, oh, just examples. We can see people like Elisha who were helped by Elijah. We see uh, Naomi and Ruth. We see. Uh, Moses and uh, Joshua we see Paul and Timothy you know so how about you because you have grown yeah. and for some of us to feel from you I believe you have been working with certain people who have helped you you know discipled you and mentored you well, for starters, apart from church meetings <laughs> church meetings you know? yeah like starting a life with people for starters I have people like you oh. I love you it's, uh, I love you too yeah so um, I have people like you who are in my life, um, people that actually do life with me. Okay. And for that I'm grateful because I get to see myself through your eyes. Wow. You know? Mm. Someone said you always need an extra set of eyes. Mm. Okay. You know, so I have a community mm -hmm. both in my church mm -hmm. and outside. Mm -hmm. I have the movement okay. uh, and whatnot. Then, do I have I do. I do have a number of them. One of them is my pastor. 
Pastor Calvin. I love that man. He's a Is he from your church? No. Okay. He's a Baptist preacher. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Baptist preacher, but I love him. Okay. He's like a dad to me. He's an old man. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever get to watch this, but I love him. Okay. Anyway, so I do have people. First of all, my community. Okay. And secondly, my pastor. Okay. So anyway, in as much as this whole conversation has been long, but I pray you guys have watched till the end, and I pray you have picked one of these things. But for me, my major takeaway is the aspect of being able to get to know God on your own. Yes, we have guidance, but your faith should not be based on your pastors. You know, like the uh, videos I shared last time, I just feel this call to just talk more about this because yeah, I good. see people riding on the backs of their pastors and if their pastors were to be removed today, a lot of people would go back to the world. Yeah. Just like the disciples, Christ left, but they were rooted enough to still press on. Though we have Peter who, you know, quite all right, he drifted a bit, we had Judas, though he's ending or something. Them, exactly. They all fled my Bala. My <laughs> but they still came back because of the teaching that they received from Christ. Yeah, Mentors, still. spiritual fathers, those are amazing people. I have those. But at the end of the day, you have to learn to study your Bible on your own. You have to learn to hear from the Holy Spirit on your own. Yes, you have guidance, but you have to have that relationship. Because like I always say, and I keep on reminding you, Christ split the curtain in two. To, we don't need priests to stand in the secret on the holy of holies on our behalf. You have to enter in the holy of holy, holy um, in the holy of holies with boldness because the Holy Spirit is with you. Ish. You know, I just ah, love this aspect. <laughs> but anyway, so you know, I feel like inviting you on my next video where you just get to talk about your addictions because you haven't really gone into details concerning yeah. the things that god set you free from yeah. but i love the things that you have talked about today so i'll be featuring him next time where he would get to talk about his addictions you know porn like he said and i believe there are other addictions that the lord i know you know i would say set him free from and the lord is still helping him you know every day just conquer all those activities and all those um stuff so anyway andrew chombachala thank you very much <laughs> i feel accomplished <laughs> really feel thank accomplished. you very much imagine after talking all this time i wanted to find out that the camera or the camera wasn't on yeah, <laughs> <that's the name. laughs> anyway guys I'll thank you very <laughs> yo thank you very much guys for watching uh feel free to share it to like and just you know continue following the altar lifestyle let's continue just preaching the word of god making noise the gospel type of noise because that is our calling so have a beautiful day night morning and uh stay blessed peace bye